Hi folks, I'm Steve Butler. Today we're throwing you a curve. We're building this Cooper topped pine chest. Come see how we do it here in the garage. All right, let's have a look at our project. We're using dimensioned pine to create the box of this project, and we're using these great large finger joints. And I love how the end grain pops, especially when you put a finish on it. And they're held together with glue and these square cut nails. Our lid is made up of individual pieces called staves, and they're all cut on an angle to create this coopered top. And I'll show you how to do that. Our handles, I'm using some uh, green red pine that was cut down out back and I've just let it sit for a while to use as our handles. I think it just gives it a nice rustic look. And our hinges and our hasp, we, we made out of leather. Let's have a look at the insides. Now, the inside we have a tray. We made this tray and you can use this box for tool storage, anything you want, toys, whatever. And we have a nice deep inside here. We have some cleats for the tray to sit on. The first thing we need to do is cut our front and back and our sides to size. Let's get started. All right, we're using three quarter inch dimension pine right off the shelf. Now I was lucky enough to get one by 12s the full width, but if you can't, you can easily glue up these boards and then cut them down. The first thing we're gonna do is cut them to 10 inches wide. Now, you just want to make sure, raise your blade up and about a quarter of an inch above your workpiece. And if you're in doubt, just use a pencil and about the thickness of a pencil. All right, so we're going to cut our boards, our front and back. Now, I've cut these to manageable sizes, but we have to square up the ends, cut them the length, and cut them the width. Okay, that looks great. Now I'm just going to use my table saw sled that I made and we're just going to cut them to length. Well, the inspiration for this project came from this um, little pirate chest I made from one of my son's birthdays. He was having a bunch of friends over for a birthday party and we have a theme every year and this one was pirates so I thought I would um, make him a little pirate chest that he could use later on, put whatever he wants in but we actually buried this in the ground. It was a lot of fun. All right, those boards look great. Now we're just gonna cut our side pieces and those are 16 inches long. Okay, they look great. There we go. We have all the pieces to make the box of our pine chest. I've always said woodworking's just about boxes. You make one small box, you make it bigger and bigger, you know, and you can add a door, moldings, whatever you want on it. Well, this project's kind of the same. This small box turned into this larger one. Um, you know, this one is where I originally put the, the rope and red maple handles on here. I obviously have some store-bought hardware. We have some brass hinges and a hasp on this. And uh, on these one we use the leather belt for our hinges. But um, yeah, it's just uh, this trunk or chest that grew out of this uh, fun project I made for my son's birthday. All right, let me show you what I did. I made a jig, which is gonna help us 
cut our finger joints. So we're using large finger joints and that gives us a lot of glue surface. We're reinforcing them with our square cut nails. But this jig, simple jig, just a piece of plywood and I used a piece of molding as a fence there, made sure this was 90 degrees. But it also helps me lay out our, our lines to cut our finger joints right on our boards. So our two larger pieces are our front and back pieces and I simply put my jig the fence right up against the edge there and I'm just going to move this back till it's flush at the edge and if the fingers end up being a little proud that's okay it actually looks a little nicer and I'm just going to trace out our fingers and I'm going to put an X the ones I want to cut out do the same thing on the other side Okay, now the front and back are laid out. I'm just going to turn the jig around, flush it up against the side, and do the same thing on the ends here. All right, that looks great. You can see where that's going to fit in, how that's going to work out. Now you can lay these up the other way you want. You can have the two fingers coming out of the front and back, or the two fingers coming out of the side, whichever way you want. It's all it's your design. Make it your own. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the bandsaw and I'm just going to trim close to my line, not right on it, and just get rid of this excess and that's just going to make the job of routing out these fingers easier. Now you can see I've just left a little meat and we'll take that out with the flush trim bit and the router. Now I'm just going to go ahead and cut the opposite fingers, same way on the bandsaw, on our front and back pieces. There we go, that looks great. You can see, I'm just gonna take the flush trim router, clean that up. All right, let's go over to the bench and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. Okay, let me show you what I did. I took our jig and it's the same thing. It's the template I used to draw out the finger joints on our boards and I've just attached it to my bench surface with a clamp. And if I clamp the other side of our jig, the clamp would interfere with the router that I'm using. So I'm using some double stick tape, just a couple of strips, put it on our jig or a template there and it's perfectly strong to hold our boards. Now, I'm just going to lay this down. These are our front and back pieces and I just want to make sure it's flush up against the fence there that I'm using and flush at the front and just apply some pressure and that's great. Now, I installed a flush trim bit in the router. You can get these with the bearing at the bottom or the bearing at the top, depending on which one you use. I would simply put my board on the bench first and my template or jig on top of that. And the bearing rides against the jig and then cuts all the excess off. So what I'm going to do is bring my router, always start it away from your workpiece, and it's just going to go along and I'm just going to cut off the excess. All right, now, use headphones. I have some earplugs, custom earplugs that I use. This can get loud. Dust mask, I'm doing some talking. There we go. That looks great. I'm just going to turn it around, do the same thing for the other side, and then do the same thing for our other board.
All right, let's have a look at this. I went ahead and I cleaned up those corners and I've just, this is just the dry fit, just put these together. But you can see, you can see how the end grain from these fingers, especially when you put um, the finish on here, the end grain just pops, it really makes a nice contrast. So I'm just gonna go ahead, dismantle this, and we're gonna go ahead and glue this up. The nice thing about these finger joints, also called box joints, it creates a lot of glue surface, so it makes it really strong. Now, you want enough to coat the surface, but you don't want too much. You don't want ex so much excess that you spend most of your time cleaning up. But you need to see some squeeze out to make sure that it's doing its job. Now, the end grain isn't a good glue joint. It's pretty porous, but I'm putting it on to kind of help as a sealer. And so the other section of our board will really adhere to it. All right, that's looking great. Now what I like to do, just to make sure this isn't square, now if we cut our fingers properly, it should all go together square, but it also helps pull in the joints. I've taken, I've made these L blocks and I've put some packing tape on them. You could use saran wrap or anything. It's that way the glue doesn't stick to them. And I'm just gonna take a couple of clamps. <clears throat> Well, in this simple looking uh, chest or trunk, um, there's a lot of woodworking. We incorporated box or finger joints and uh, we learned that you can do them many ways. You can use a router and a template just like I did, or we could have used a set of stacked dado blades and cut them on the table saw, or for that matter, we could have drawn our lines and with a steady hand cut them out on the bandsaw. All right, let me show you what I did. After I took the clamps off, I did a little light sanding. And, I mean, look at these. These finger joints look great. And, and, you know, the placement of this is totally arbitrary. You could, you could offset them. You can do whatever you like. Now, when I put a finish on this, this is really going to pop. You can see how that end grain pops. That's how it's going to look with a finish on it. What I did, I took our off cuts, and I used those as our cleats to hold our bottom in. I just cut a couple of boards and attached the bottom. Now, what I'm going to do, I took more of our offcuts and I just cut some feet. I'm just going to attach these just to elevate the case a little bit. And what I do is I put them in about a sixteenth, eighth, eighth of an inch, pardon me, from the edge. And I try to line up the end grain with the end grain of this finger just for some continuity. So, all right, I'm just going to use some brads, glue, and tack these on. Now it's pine, I shouldn't need to pre-drill. I'm just gonna skate this a little bit back and forth and it just grabs, helps grab that. Now the longer ones are five and a half inches. Again, that's just arbitrary. Just, you know, cut a few pieces. Had a look at it, see what looks good. I'm using those for the front and the back, and the shorter ones we'll use on the side. Just bevel it a bit. Again, just a nice little accent. Now, by putting them in just a little bit, it creates this little step, but it, it's what's called a shadow line. Helps create a shadow line. And then it doesn't look so heavy sitting on the ground. It just lightens it up a bit. All right, that looks great. I'm just gonna take a nail set and go ahead and sink these heads. You don't want them scraping on your floor or anything like that. All right, let's have a look. 
see that just elevates it nice. The end grain matches the end grain. Nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pre-drill a little bit, even though this is pine, and we are going to put in our square cut nails. Now these are cut, you can see that longer face there. You want to put that in with the grain. From experience I know this, if you put it across the grain, it's going to split. It has a tendency to split. Nice, that looks great. So I'm just going to go around and put them all in. All right, that looks great. Now the next thing we have to do is create our top, our Cooper top, and I'm going to show you how I did that. Sometimes when you're rounding over with the router bit, it's really difficult to get right up into these, the corners of the box here, and it won't. It'll, you'll still have a, a crisp edge. Take a screwdriver, you can use a metal punch, anything hard enough, and only with pine. It's going to be difficult to use with other hardwoods, but it will work. But with pine, it really does a nice job. And you just burnish over the edge, and it gives a nice, natural curve. All right, let's talk about our coopered lid. Um, now, I used inch and three-quarter inch wide strips of wood, known as staves, when you're making a curve, just think of a barrel. That's what they call them, barrel staves. Um, but you could have used any width you wanted. It was kind of arbitrary. But by using narrower strips of wood, the curve isn't as drastic. Now, this curve for my sides, again, just arbitrary. I like the look of it. And how I got that is I made a full-scale drawing here. You don't always have to do this, but you know, when you make drawings, you can make your mistakes on paper first, and it doesn't cost you material um, in lumber. So, my simple jig here, off cut of wood, I put a nail in it at the radius I want, and again, through trial and error. Um, you can see I have a few of them here until I got the curve I wanted. It's a gentle curve, and I drew that out and created this template, and that's going to help me make my sides. Now, if you notice, it stops short of the sides. It's three quarters of an inch away from the edge there and there, and that is to accommodate the thickness of our staves so that when we glue them on, it reaches the edge. So I used that to trace my sides. I'm just going to go to the bandsaw, cut them out, hit them on the sander, and then we'll work on our staves. Our sides look great. Cut them out on the bandsaw. I just hit them on the edge sander to smooth them out. Now, you'll notice I drew a center line, took a measure, divided it in two, and the reason for that is you only need to find the angles for half of this. Go along one side, and then this is like a mirror image. This stave will equal that one, so forth and so on as you go along. So what I did, I, I got my angles, from my drawing, drew a 90 degree line, and then the best tool in the shop, a simple protractor, and I just laid it on there and measured an inch and three quarters from my center line, which equals the width of my stave, and drew a line over and took that angle on there. What I did is made a prototype. So I have 10 staves, I put a piece of tape on there, and I just wrote the angles on there. And at first, it's a little bit like trial and error. And you don't even need to do this if you don't want to. You can just cut an angle, attach it onto your side, and cut the next one to match and fit there, kind of like a puzzle. So don't be afraid to try this. It's not as difficult as it seems. All right, have all my staves here. We're going to go ahead and cut the angles on them. I have my template. Now the first one, right from my center line, is five degrees. So I've set the angle of my table saw blade to five degrees. I'm just going to make a cut, check it, and then just go ahead using my template and cut all the angles on there. Now, it's easy to get turned around on this, so you might want to, you know, just draw a simple line just showing 
the angle, you're the orientation of the board. It's easy to flip this around and make a mistake. All right, that looks great. Now, I had just had my fence set so that the blade was just hitting this enough to cut that angle. What I'm gonna do is, like I said, it's a mirror image. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the angle on one side of these, and then I'm just gonna move my fence over to inch and three quarter. That's the finished dimension of the width of our staves, and then cut the angle on the other edge of the board. Okay, that looks great. We have all the angles cut on eight of the staves. Now, the last one on the ends of our coopered lid, I've left wider. And what I'm going to do is cut the angle on one edge, and we're going to leave it long. And that way, after we glue it up and we fit the lid, we can take a hand plane and knock it off to final size. All right, I've taken my sides, and I've put them in clamps and attached them to the bench top. And I've separated them by 22 inches, and that's the length of our staves. And what I'm going to do, you can see my two piles here, that's for the, the left and right side, I was talking about that mirror image. I'm going to put a bead of glue on one angle, and I've just pre-drilled a little, and I'm just going to tack these in with a couple of brads, and then I'm going to go along and do the next one until we're all done. I'm just going to do that one a little bit, move this over, align this one, flush it up, apply some pressure down. There we go. Now we'll take the next one, my board A, the center one, and do the same thing. Put a little bit of glue on my side. This time I'm going to put a bead of glue along the angle and hammer that home on the next one. Yeah, it can be a little tricky trying to get these angles uh, to fit perfectly, especially the first time. And I'd like, to, I'd like to admit that all these were, you know, just butt up perfect, but that's not the case. There are a couple of little gaps, and, you know, especially after I hit them with the hand plane. But what I did is I put a little bit of glue in the gaps, and then I took the sawdust from when I sanded it, and I filled it in the gaps, and, and the glue will hold it in place. Why I did that, I'm not sure what finish I'm going to put on this right now. I haven't made up my mind. But if I stain it, the stain, or the sawdust, pardon me, will absorb the stain just like the wood would have. And uh, you won't really notice it. And you can see, it, it looks great. It worked out really well. All right, let me show you what I did. After I took the clamps off, I took a hand plane and I knocked off the high points where the staves met each other. And then I sanded it. We round over the edges. Took, you know, we attached these with some brad nails, so also what I did, I wanted to mimic the square head nails, the look of the square head nails, and I took the point of my file, it's a square point, and I just popped it in, basically used it as a nail punch, tapped it with a hammer, but it creates these square holes, just aesthetics, just to mimic the square head nails. Then what I did, I took old pieces of a belt, you can see here, and I cut them down to form hinges. Now, this is about eighth of an inch thick leather. You don't want to use belts that are laminated. Two pieces of leather, they'll end up falling apart. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and attach our hinges to the back. I've already done it to our lid. And then we'll go ahead and uh, punch holes in the hasp for the front. There we go. I'll just go around and do the same thing for all of them. All 
Right. It's looking great. Yeah, on the original chest I made, um, the tray inside I did a little differently. I used rabbit joints and just glued it and nailed it together. And I used glue and nail on this one too, but I carried the box joints or the finger joint theme onto the tray. And I just really like the contrast. When I finish this, the end grain of the finger box joints will really pop and you really notice it. And I just think it looks sharp. Now let me show you the handles. Again, you can buy hardware, store-bought hardware from this, but I just kind of like the rustic look of this. And once I started, it just continued. So we have these wooden handles that I attached with some cord. And let's have a look at them. I have some pieces of red maple from a tree that came down and I just saved it out back and that's what I used. I cut a couple of pieces of red maple. These are about eight inches long, totally arbitrary, it's up to you. And I just nipped off the horns on the bandsaw and rounded the edges on the sander, just touched them up. Now I've drilled 3 8 holes in them to accommodate the 3 8 thick rope or cord we're using. All right, that looks great. That worked out well. I really like the look of the rustic handles, the square head nails, using the leather belts, just an option for the hinges and the hasp. Nice tray. Again, you can make this whatever you want, a toolbox, whatever. All right, as usual, I had a blast making this with you. I hope you'll come back and see us again here in the garage. There's always one. Well, there's the outtake.